Hello, uh, I'm Mark. I'm a concept artist and illustrator working in the entertainment industry. And here I would like to demonstrate how you can easily create an epic landscape painting. So in the very first steps, I just jump in and I'm creating uh, a couple of thumbnails, like really simple black and white images, just to block in the main composition. I just I just went in because I didn't really have any any idea what I wanted to create. I just started started to play around with basic values and slowly build up uh, the environment. So in case of an epic landscape, um, the main focus is to to create huge depth to the image and. I wanted to create uh, a fantasy landscape, so I started with mountains, and I wanted to focus on on uh, the mood of the image, and not necessarily the the small details. So, and because I I wanted to create more variations to to choose from, these are really quick ones, and I'm really focusing on the the lights and the shadows and the different space segments. Just establishing the, the background, the mid, the mid ground and the foreground elements just to have the right values. The main principle is, so one, one of the main principles is of creating an epic landscape is to show scale. And there are a couple of tricks to do this. So if you if you place your horizon line uh, really low, then you instantly gonna feel that everything is really big in the space what you're showing. So as you as you can you could see in the very in the first two thumbnails I placed and on it's gonna be the same on, on the third one. So I placed the horizon line in the lower third of of each landscape painting and and I have uh, bigger horizontal lines and shapes under the horizon and uh, and another and bigger vertical things uh, almost exactly the same things repeating further in the distance so here like these giant tree roots in the first image, they were uh, the hills and the mountains. In, uh, in the second one, they, they were the, the huge, gigantic buildings. And because I'm so here, I'm just I'm just bouncing ideas. So I spent like I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes with each with each thumbnail. I just basically went through like experimenting with shapes and and basic compositions just to have have a variation of of what I'm doing of what I'm gonna do. Usually uh, the clients don't see this thumbnail stage. Uh, so most of the times I'm 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 doing thumbnails for myself in case of professional work as well but but I don't send send these to the client. So these are just, just for myself just to it's it's almost like the notes of uh, of a writer, so a writer makes notes before before he starts a novel, just to just to experiment, just to bounce ideas in his mind. These are these thumbnails are the same, so I'm not focusing on the details at all. I'm just more interested in in the overall composition, uh, the general values of the image, and and just just the main subject. So I'm I'm ex exploring and bouncing ideas. And um, it's also good to, to keep these, uh, these thumbnails black and white because um, you're not dis distracted by, by the colors. So the less information you can you could have in, in these thumbnails, I'm, uh, and I mean inf uh, information like don't use too much details, don't, you don't have to worry about details, you don't have to worry about the colors, you don't have, you really have to worry about the story just it's the base of the image the I don't know the the 
the skeleton, the, the body of, of, of the image. And yeah, I'm just I'm just showing, just checking them all, all the four together, and I let it rest for 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 a day or two, and then I went back and I picked the fourth one because I I seen more more potential in, in the fourth one. So I went back and I just started to to jump into color straight. So I don't really would. I don't really like to leave the, the colors at to the, to the final final stage, so I introduced more and more colors um, in, in into this image. I used overlay layers and, and I, I used for this over, mainly overlay and soft light layers, uh, uh, but you have to be careful with these because these two could really easily modify your your values. So the best is to keep uh, both the soft light and overlay adjustment layers uh, around. I don't know. I mean, the colors you use on these layers, just keep them around fifty percent saturation and fifty percent value. And this way, you can you can avoid to. To create oversaturated, uh, so oversaturated images, and and you can keep the, the values of uh, of your original black and white paintings. And here, basically, I'm just I'm just adding more details and extending uh, everything a bit further. So I'm just painting in more clouds and rocks and adding more and more space segments. To the, to the image, just to make it more interesting and have and have a more intriguing silhouette in, in every space segment. So in this case, um, uh, aerial perspective is is a really powerful tool to create epic images. And that's that's the, the simple principle. What I'm what I'm using here is basically separating. The different space segments with uh, with layers and layers of moist and air, and because I already plugged in the light source, what is somewhere behind behind the middle mountains, so I can I can now add highlights and shadows according to to the light lighting scene what I'm using. So here, this is this is a, a really powerful powerful thing when I'm when I'm what I'm using, it's zooming really, really, really out because if it works like a really small image from really far, if, if the composition works that way, then it should work as a basic big image as well. And now um, I am, I'm established the whole the whole composition and I really wanted to push this a bit further. So, and I wanted to, to add more visual noise, so I, I collect a bunch of, bunch of images from online and I'm just, I'm just dropping them uh, from various jungles and aerial shots of forests and rocks and stuff like that. It's nothing, nothing really specific, I, I, I thought it, it just would be a good fit to the, to the, whole, to the whole scene, what I, what I started to paint. So I'm using these more like a visual visual knowledge, just just to push the amount of details further. So I didn't really wanted to create a, a matte painting, but it's but I wanted to create something like like a concept of a matte painting. So and sometimes sometimes I have to do this in my professional work and. To, to create establishing shots for for uh, for the effects effects artists and matte painters later, and this is a this is a really uh, a really handy technique of what you can use, and as you see, I don't I don't care much about about the lights because I already established the lights and shadows and everything. With, with my painting, so so everything is what I'm doing is just dropping dropping a texture and erasing it back accordingly to to 
to the hindles to the, to the mountain sides. And here um, I pretty much finished this stage. This, this was basically the, the third stage of, of, uh, of the process. The first was the thumbnail, the second was uh, a more, more detailed sketch uh, or, or a half finished painting. And the third one was, uh, was texturing. And the fourth one, what I just started, is basically integrating the, the textures and, and give the painting the, the final look, the, the finishing look, what I was after. So I'm, I moved back and I'm basically painting over everything and integrating the textures into the image. And I don't, I don't really zoom in, as, as you can see. Um, I don't really like to zoom in to my images. Sometimes, sometimes I have to, but I, I prefer to do this only at the focal points where, where I want more details and more uh, really sharp things to happen. But otherwise, I, I prefer to, to see through the whole image. It's probably because I'm, I'm coming from, from a traditional art background and there you don't really have a chance to, to zoom in to your images that much as, as you can in, in a computer. But, oh here we go, I'm just, I'm just jumping back with a bit more texturing to that mountain temple, what should be the focal point. But that's, that again, or just adding some, some visual noise, just to have a base to, to paint on. And then here I'm, I'm, I'm going back and, and adding more details with some uh, texture brushes. And yeah, the, the image is, is pretty much finished now. So I'm, uh, what I'm doing is just adding the, f the final bits and pieces here and there, adding a bit more painterly, rough, uh, rough lines and splotches of paint. And this is the, the fifth stage, the, the really final stage, where I usually, uh, I'm, I'm adding effects like clouds and fog and dust and things like that. This is what, what brings uh, what brings more life in, in, into my images. And it also gives the image a really cinematic a movie like look because and the image is pretty much finished, so I'm just made some final color adjustments and detailing the focal points just a bit more, adding some windows, some flying birds to finish it, some final color adjustments and contrast adjustments, and it's ready. Thank you all for watching and I hope you learned something.